All right, I might go kind of fast and you could say, oh, now what did he say about that? So um, proving identities, proving, proving trig identities. And they give you, um, and we already kind of have done that when we're doing problems like this, we're, when we've simplified identities, we're, you're basically, um, you're simplifying, you're showing that, when you're proving identities, you're showing that one side of the equation is equal to the other side of the equation. So um, sometimes they call it verifying. Verifying, verifying, you don't have to write down that word, but it's the same thing, okay? And uh, some of the rules for verifying our work with work with only one side. Only only one side. And usually what you're doing when you're verifying an identity, an identi identity is an equation that's true for all values of x. Okay, so like so like sine of x equals pi, that's not an identity. Okay, that's called a that's called a or sine of x equals root of three over two. That's not an identity, that's like an equation. It's, it's, um, and it's only got one solution. What's okay? pi? But pi, did I say pi? So I meant pi. Pi is a Greek letter. So anyway, um, but if I say like, show that sine of x equals, equals one over cosine of x. That's true for all values of x within the domain of sine and cosine. And that's called an identity, okay. Go sit in the back. I just can't have you talking the entire time with the teacher. Okay, go sit in the back, please. Go. Okay? Work with only one side. And some other things that you have to do um, when you're, and some, uh, some techniques that you can use to show that this is true is you can factor things out. Okay? Whoops. Oh, come on. You can, uh, sorry, in the back, Henry. Oh, not in my back. Okay, right. Factor, you can uh, add fractions, which we, and you've seen me doing it like this, kind of what I did in those last few examples. You can add fractions, you can find a common denominator, find common denominators. Denominator, you can use fundamental identities. Use, use fundamental, fundamental identities, identities. These are just some of the techniques you might try. Um, you can square things, you can change everything. So another technique that you use a lot is change everything, change everything to sines and cosines, to sines and cosines. But that's not always the best thing to do. So depending on the situation, and the most, the most important thing to do is do lots of practice. Do lots of practice problems. Because when I first got this, I, I didn't, when I, I, I don't remember having done this in high school or even in college, where you do have to prove things, okay? But I don't remember, didn't remember all this trick stuff. But when I first started, I did lots and lots of problems and I got better at it. And then you kind of learn, oh, I see, I've seen one like this before. I can apply this technique to this problem or something like that. So really, you have to do lots of practice problems or you're not gonna, you're not gonna get it. All right, so let's start with an example. Um, verify, I don't like that color. Verify that, verify that um, secant squared, see if this is an easy one, secant squared theta minus one over secant squared theta equals sine squared of theta. And you could probably solve this by turning everything into uh, sines and cosines, but I probably don't. I probably don't want to do that. So again, and usually you want to start with the more complicated side and change it into the simpler side, which is the more complicated side. 
to this camera. The left or the right? The left side, right? So I'm going to do something to this. And does anyone see something I could do right away here? How could I? Who wants to guess? Yes, sir. Secret squared over. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help you. Oh, you could do that. Oh, yeah. That's another way to do it. Okay. But what did you just? I'm going to go back to Nathan. So, and uh, Nathan points at a good point that there's more ways to do this than than one. So Sean said, rewrite this, right? As what? Very good. Tangent squared theta. Uh, plus one, right? Right over here. Tangent squared theta plus one equals secant, even though it's an x instead of theta. So I have well, uh, you have secant squared theta minus one. So it just be tan squared theta. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna sub in tan squared theta plus one minus one. Let's just do it one separate. I see what you're. Doing. Either way, it works, right? So this goes away, right? One minus one. Now what do you think I could do? Turn secant into cosine. Turn secant into cosine and turn tangent into sine, sine okay. over cosine. So I could rewrite this as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta and over secant squared theta, which is the same as bringing the secant squared up top and turning it to cosine squared theta. Do you guys see what I did? No? no. Who doesn't see? This secant squared comes up top, right? And this tangent squared turns into sine over cosine. And then I could just go like that, and boom, I'm done. Right? Now what Nathan said, right? He said, break this, this is another technique you could use. Break it into two fractions. Secant squared theta over secant squared theta, right? Minus one over secant squared theta. See that? What's secant squared theta over secant squared theta? One. What's one minus secant squared theta equal to? Cosine squared theta. What's one minus cosine squared theta equal to? Sine squared theta. See? So if you had done this, either way, you get to the same solution. Okay? So it's two ways to approach the same problem. Follow? Tracy? Yeah. Good. You have a headache? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so next thing, uh, let's do this. Verify. Verify. Oh, oh my Mobius. Verify that 2 secant squared x will use x here. Oh, they use the alpha. I'm not going to use alpha. That's too, that's too, too hard to draw. Over 1 minus sine x. Uh, plus 1 over 1 plus sine of x. Now, which side looks more complicated to you guys? The right side. So probably what I want to do is turn the right side into the left side. So this is very much like that one I did, that one of your homework problems you guys asked me about. What should I do? Yeah. Times it by what? Yeah, so I'm going to multiply this piece by 1 plus sine x. Is that what you mean? No, I mean. This is what you need to do. 1 plus sine x. I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. And then I'm going to multiply this by what? 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. Because I want to find a common denominator. Probably, because you can't just have, because this thing isn't split up fraction, so I don't want my left side to be split up fraction. So then when I do this, I get 1 plus sine x, very much like that example that I did before. 1 plus sine x plus 1 minus sine x. And what's my common denominator? What's 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x? Sine squared. 1 minus sine squared x, right? 1 minus sine squared x. And then, like in the last problem, this goes away with this. 
and this becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then I get, what's 1 minus sine squared theta equal to, or sine squared x? Cosine squared x, and how could I rewrite that? What's cosine squared 2 secant squared x. Okay. So how would I know how to do that? You have to practice, okay? See different situations. Oh, I might apply this to this situation. I might do this to this situation. And so on and so forth. Okay? Another one? Study show that if you write stuff <coughs> down while I'm teaching, it helps you learn. Okay. That's why rather than make paper airplanes and such. All right. So, um, People are audio learners. Audio learners? Yeah. Okay. Writing stuff down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so say I want to do this, turn tangent tangent squared of x plus one times uh, cosine squared of x. These are fun, aren't they? They're like little puzzles. You know, it's like it's better than doing Sudoku or whatever you do. Um, equals minus tan squared tan squared of x. Okay? And uh, okay. And so what do you have to do? Any ideas? Oh my. This looks kind of complicated. <laughs> I, who has an idea? You, I'll give you a hint. Use fundamental identities. <coughs> Are you going to tell us that to it, Taylor? Yep. Almost. No, no, almost. So this, what's tan squared x plus 1 equal to? Um, Secant squared x. Now you could try to multiply these together, but that'll give you terms like cosine squared and minus tan, and then you're going to have a tan cosine squared, which probably isn't going to help you at all. Okay? So this is equal to this, right? Now this, there's a little trick. If I multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1, which I'm about to do, okay? I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1. Negative 1 over negative 1. Why would I want to do that? What's that going to turn this into? A equals, no, it's not going to, it's going to turn, if I multiply this by negative 1, that turns this 1 into a positive, right? And if I multiply this by negative 1, that turns this into a negative, okay? And then I'm going to divide that by negative 1, which is the same as multiplying by negative 1. See what I did? Okay. Okay. Well, maybe I'll leave my negative 1 down here so I don't get you confused. I'll leave negative 1 down here. Okay? I just multiplied this by negative 1. You guys understand that dividing by negative 1 is the same as multiplying by negative 1? Yes? Okay, so I might as well just take this negative 1 and bring it out here somewhere. Okay? And I'm going to cross it out. What's 1 minus cosine squared equal to? Sine squared. So I have negative secant squared times sine squared x. I'm almost there. How can I rewrite this? over cosine, right? So secant is 1 over cosine. So secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. So I'm going to leave that negative sign up top, turn this into negative sine squared x over cosine squared of x, which turns into negative tan squared of x. How would you ever know how to do that? Practice, practice, practice. Yes? Where does the sine x squared come from? You go straight from cosine x squared sine x squared. Where does this come where, from? Where, how does cosine turn into sine there? Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, right? So, you know, that's true. That's a fundamental idea, yes. right? So another form of that is 1 minus sine squared of x equals cosine squared of x, right? If I subtract sine squared from both sides of the equation, 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. <coughs> Don't do this. Don't say that cosine is equal to, cosine of x is equal to 1 minus sine of x. That's not true. It's only true if they're all squared, right? So you can't turn sines into cosines unless they're 
squared numbers. All right. So every time you see one minus cosine oh, squared, got it, got you it. can change that into sine squared. Any time you see one minus sine squared, you can change that into cosine squared. Okay. And same thing goes for secant squared minus one and cosecant squared minus one equals tan squared and cotan squared, respectively. Also, what's secant squared minus tan squared equal to? One, right? And cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is also, also equal to one. So you could shift around those fundamental identities to make them work for you. Yes, sir? Wouldn't it just be easier to turn the initial cosine x? Cosine squared x minus one. Cosine squared. Yeah, that's what we did. That's what we did, yeah. But uh, negative sine x squared. Yeah, because you just you move the one over to the cosine side. And yeah. The sine over to the, the one side. Yeah, but oh. I'm afraid I lose equal. If you want to change that into negative sine squared, that's what you can do. That. But if you could do that, that's okay. But you do have to show. The other thing I could have done is call this one minus sine squared of x, right? Call this one minus sine squared of x, and those <coughs> ones could have gotten wet. <coughs> See, it's another way to look at the same thing. And then I would have got that that is equal to um, negative sine squared. Okay. Anyway, I want to get through a couple more be while we have a few minutes. Show. Show. So sometimes I'll say show. Sometimes I'll say verify. Sometimes I'll prove. Right? Tan x. Tan x plus cotan x equals secant x, secant x, uh, cosecant x. And you say, I don't know how to do that. Well, one of the things, if you have, it's usually easier to simplify the side that has a plus or minus in it rather than the one that's times together. Okay? So probably I want to work with this side. And this is the case in which probably since there's no squares or anything like this, you probably want to you probably want to rewrite this one in terms of sines and cosines. If you don't see a squared or anything, that's kind of a good key. So how can I how can I rewrite tan in terms of sines and cosines? Sine x over cosine x, okay, plus cosine x over sine of x, and then I'm going to find a common denominator like I did in the last case. So in this case, that involves multiplying this one by sine of x over sine of x, and involves multiplying this one by cosine x over cosine x. And some of you will immediately see that that's kind of nice. Do you understand what I did there? Okay. Because what sine of x times sine of x? No, sine squared of x. What's cosine of x times cosine of x? Cosine squared of x over sine of x times cosine x times cosine x, which is equal to, what's this equal to up top? 1 over sine x cosine x, which is equal to, now I can bring this up top and make it secant, right? And I can bring this up top and make it cosecant. And I switch things around, but that's OK. So there you go. And then. Isn't that cool? Math puzzles. OK. I'm going to do a couple more. Sorry. Got to do it. OK. Um, OK, so the next one, show that. Show. I know you got to go. The last one, you might work. Wait, it's not going to go. Let me just do the last one. I'll let you try the last couple. You can look in the book for the last one. Cause, um, it's the same example. Secant, show that secant x plus, that's a secant x. That wasn't very good. Secant x plus tan of x equals cos x um, over 1 minus sine of x. OK, so uh, anyone have an idea here? What should I do? What did I do? Yeah. I'm so, so probably, probably this is a case in which you could probably change this to sines and cosines and show that it's equal to that side. But a lot of times, if you have a one minus cosine of something, you want to multiply by the conjugate over on this side. So I'm going to work with the right side. 
multiply this by 1 plus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. Because a lot of times that will make things disappear. And I know that from just from doing stuff. Okay, So if I multiply through, I get uh, cosine x plus sine x times cosine x. I'm going to call it sine x cosine x. And on the bottom, what do I have on the bottom? <coughs> What is this turning? What's on the bottom? Sine squared. One minus sine squared x. Okay, and then I could change one minus sine squared x into what? <coughs> Cos cosine squared x, right? But that looks like a little heart there. Cosine squared x. So now, cosine squared x. So now, what you want to do? Who can tell me what to do? Like we did in that very first problem. This is where Nathan helped us up. What am I going to do, Nathan? So see how this is separated? So probably you want to separate this into cosine x over cosine squared x, which I'm allowed to do, plus sine x cosine x also over cosine squared x. And then what I could do is cancel out. This has a cosine, this is like x over x squared, right? So that turns into 1 over cosine x. This turns into sine of x over cosine x. Okay? And what's 1 over cosine x equal to? What's 1 over cosine x equal to? Secant x. And what's sine plus sine over cosine equal to? Tan x. And uh, then you're done. Now, occasionally, you will. I mean, you don't know where to start, right? Some of you guys. So sometimes you'll go, you'll go someplace and you'll head to a dead end. Then you restart. You try again, right? Because because there are cases in which that'll happen. But if it says it's a true, if it says it's an identity, then you should be able to get there somehow. Okay, just take Hold on there, uh, Taylor. Tyler.